All right. So as far as energy changes are concerned, we have talked about measuring energy change. Uh, in fact, we didn't really learn how to measure it. We know of theoretical ways to measure. Also, we know of theoretical ways to calculate energy change. But how do we do this in the lab? That is what we are going to do today. Now, I know that you guys, if you're going for exams this year, you will have an exemption for uh, paper three, but it can be tested in paper five as well. So it's not really an optional topic. So here's the thing. If I want to figure out how much energy change something has had, now that would mean that I'm giving it heat or getting heat from that thing. Now, every time something loses or gains heat, what is one thing that changes? Every single time, what about that thing must change to show that it has gained or lost heat? I would expect either a change in temperature or a change in state, right? When things get heat, they either change their temperature, which means energy is being used to give them more kinetic energy and it's converted to kinetic energy of the things in there, the particles inside, or it will change its state. Now, assuming that there is no change in state, then there will be a change in temperature, regardless of what that substance is, it will absorb or lose some heat energy, whatever the case, and there will be some change in temperature, which will show as Delta T. Now, Delta T means the change in temperature. Obviously you can find it by subtracting the initial value of temperature from the final value of temperature. Now, here's my question. If the initial value of temperature is 23 degrees Celsius nearest to a one degrees and the final temperature is 45 degrees Celsius again nearest to one degree what is the error in the final value that I get plus minus 0 0.5 why do you say that sir because we always divide the error by two yeah, so we always divide the least count by two to figure out what the error is, but this would imply that this is not 23 degrees. This is 23 plus or minus 0 0.5. And this is 45 plus or minus 0 0.5 again. So if I want to find the change in temperature, that would be I subtract the initial value of temperature from the final value of temperature which means I'm going to get 45 minus 23, which is 22 degrees. So my question is, what is this plus minus? Is it also 0 0.5 or is it something else? Thing is the errors will add up as well. You make a mistake here, you make a mistake in the second value. Your errors are obviously going to catch up to you and you are going to get a difference of plus or minus one degree Celsius. Reason? You're taking two values. They have individual errors. When you subtract them, the error adds up. Error never gets subtracted. Error is always added up. If it was something I was multiplying, obviously fractional error will add up. So this is something that we study in physics mostly, but is sometimes checked about in paper three as well. So remember one thing, the error in this thing is going to add with the error in this thing. And that's how we're going to get plus minus one as the final order. So what could the, what's the maximum value this temperature change could have? 23 degrees. 23. And what's the minimum value? Obviously 21 degrees. Yes. So that's the range of temperature change we'll get. So this is Delta T. Now, when things gain heat energy, how much heat energy they gain and how it manifests itself in terms of the temperature change depends on what we call specific heat capacity of that thing. Now, specific heat capacity is simply the idea that how much heat energy, how is that, whatever heat energy you give, how is that distributed in that substance? So obviously some substances gain more energy and then they show a greater change in their length and all that, but what they cannot change, like what does not depend on the substances, the change in temperature that it gets and the mass that that thing has. So specific heat, heat capacity is basically the heat energy distributed into its mass. And we are taking unit mass here because it's specific. So it is one kg of that thing. 
So that is why specific heat capacity, we show it as small c, and this is going to show how fast or how slow something gains or loses heat energy. Now here's the thing, because we are mostly going to perform experiments with solutions and specific heat capacity of water is 4,200 joules per kg Kelvin. We are going to assume that our solution also has the same value, which we also sometimes refer to as 4.2 or 4.18. One of these two values are given to you in the exam. 4.2 joules per gram Kelvin or joules Kelvin minus one gram minus one. So these two values are given either 4.2 and 4.18 or 4200. 4200 is usually not given. In dono mein se koi hota hai. So we are assuming that the heat capacity of our solution is the same as heat capacity of water. And the reason for that is that we are working with diluted solutions, solutions that are diluted so much that the amount of solute does not affect the heat capacity of the water. So it's majorly water that is deciding how it absorbs or loses energy. Okay, so that's the second thing that's important. And obviously the third thing is mass. So combine all of these three things, change in temperature. Sorry, what happened here? I raised it. <laughs> so change in temperature, the specific heat capacity and the mass of things, and you have the amount of heat energy that is absorbed by the substance. And that is Q and that's equal to MC Delta T. So mass times heat capacity times change in temperature. Tell me if the color gets too dark. All right. So this is the formula we have for measuring the heat energy absorbed or released by a substance. Of course, whether it's absorbed or released depends on the change in temperature, how it works. Now, here's the thing. We know that water has a solution. Water, pure water has a density of one gram per centimeter cube, which simply means that you take one gram of water and you have one, it will have one point one cm cube as the volume, right? So if you have 20 grams of water, the volume will be 20 cm cube, which means that I can technically replace the mass here. If I'm talking about water, I can replace it with volume. And that's also something that we use that heat energy. Uh, absorbed. Why? why? Because water has density of one, which means one gram for one cm cube. They're exactly the same. 20 gram water, 20 cm cube volume. The values are the same. So is this only for water? It is, it is. Or anything that has the same density as water. And because we are working with solutions again, we will take that to be true. So we can say that we see Delta T is also something that is applicable. That is true for aqueous solutions, dilute aqueous solutions mostly. Okay. So we normally use the volume of whatever solution we have instead of the mass of the solution. And we get this equation. So here's the thing. If I want to figure out the enthalpy change in anything, then what I need to do is that first I need to figure out the enthalpy change during the reaction. How do I know that? Every reaction that happens, there's going to be some change in temperature of the solution. Then I will figure out how many moles of water I have in that thing. And based on that, I can figure out the mass and based on the change in temperature that I have, I can figure out the heat energy given. Let me do it again. So first of all, you should, obviously when you're doing a reaction, you can either measure it or you can calculate the enthalpy change that you're going to get. Or maybe that if you're doing it in the lab, you can measure the change in temperature. So that gives you Delta T. Then we figure out how many moles of water are there in the thing, because that will tell us the mass of water, or you can easily measure the volume of water in there, volume of solution. And then you use the value C 4.2 or 4.18, and you can figure out the enthalpy or heat energy absorbed or released during the reaction. So let's do a reaction, uh, an example, and that will obviously make things easier for us. 
25 cm cube or one mole HCl, mole per dm cube HCl was neutralized by the same volume of same concentration, sodium hydroxide. The temperature change was five degrees Celsius. So that gives us the temperature change. There you go. This is temperature change. So that's delta T, which is five degrees Celsius, which is the same as five Kelvin. And then they're saying that uh, the volume of the solution here is 25 here and 25 here. So the total volume is going to be 25 plus 25. That's 50 cm cube. And because we're talking about highly diluted solution, we can take that to equal to 50 grams as well. Okay. Now, what is our, obviously the enthalpy change, the delta T or delta H, sorry, delta H, which is the heat energy released and all that, that's equal to uh, 50 grams or 50 cm cube times five times 4.18 or 4.2, whatever that comes out to be. So 50 times five times 4.2. I'm getting 1050 as my answer. So 1050 joules. That's the heat energy that I had, okay, in the reaction. So now they're saying, calculate the enthalpy change of neutralization. Now, enthalpy change of this neutralization is 1050 joules. That's it. Okay. But here's the thing. We want to figure out the enthalpy change. Enthalpy change is slightly different from heat because while, yeah, yeah, while heat energy is in joules, enthalpy change is heat energy per mole. Okay. So heat energy, this is the heat released or all that. And enthalpy is heat energy per unit mole. So there is a slight difference there. So now we need to figure out how many moles of water are there. So let's write the equation. It's oh, okay. Sorry, something wrong. Yeah, it's L plus NaOH. When they react, they produce H2O plus NaCl. I need to figure out how much water do they produce. So I can easily do that. Uh, if I have how many moles of HCl do I have? So number of moles is concentration times volume. Concentration is one, volume is 25 over 1000. So that is 0 0.025 moles. So 0 0.025 mole of HCl react in a one-to-one -one ratio with 0 0.025 mole of NaOH. Obviously they're going to produce number of moles of water is going to be 0 0.025. Clear so far? Yes, sir. So now I know the heat energy that is released and I know the moles that were created in, as a process of that reaction as a result. So now my delta H or heat enthalpy, uh, enthalpy change of neutralization is going to be heat energy released divided by moles of water. So that's going to be 42 kilojoules per mole. And this is heat energy lost to the surrounding, so it's going to be negative. How do I know it's negative from the question statement? So because uh, the temperature increases. Yeah, so that's the so keyword, yes. So the temperature increase, and that tells me that the heat energy is lost to the surrounding. Okay, let's do another question. Okay, 0 0.16 grams of methanol was burned. Take care. So that's the fuel that we have. And obviously that's going to lose that is going to produce heat energy that is then absorbed by 50 grams of water. And that is heated from 19 to 23. So there's a change of four degrees Celsius in the water that is heated. Calculate enthalpy change of combustion. I think there's a mistake here. So some value hume methanol ki diya or val or humse wo methane ki value mang rahe. I think this should be methane in both the cases, or let's just change it to methanol in both the cases. Okay, so methanol hona chahiye isko. All right. So what's happening here is that you have some fuel which is burning. It's producing heat energy. That heat energy is absorbed by water, and we are assuming 100% transfer of heat. We are assuming there is no heat loss to the surroundings. And when that happens, the water that is there, 50 grams of it, it absorbs that energy. And by how much energy it absorbs, we can figure out how much energy is released. Why? Because heat released by the fuel 
is equal to heat absorbed by water because there is no loss of energy so if i can figure out the heat absorbed by water i can figure out the heat released by methane and i have mass of methane so if i have mass of methane i can figure out moles of methane and based on that um, methane or what is it methanol yeah sorry so i can use those number of moles and the heat absorbed by water to figure out the enthalpy change of combustion do you understand this chain of reasoning yes sir theek hai okay so let's see how much heat is absorbed by water i have 50 grams of water i have 4.2 as its specific heat capacity and the change in temperature is 4 okay so this is going to be uh, 840 so 840 joules heat energy that is absorbed by water assuming there is 100% transfer that is also the heat energy released by combustion of this methanol how many moles of methanol did i have so number of moles of methanol i have 0.16 that is the mass divided by uh, mr so i will need to figure out the mr methanol is ch3oh that is 12 plus 3 plus 16 plus 1 which is 32 so 0.16 divided by 32 that is going to be 0.1 over 2 0.05 Zero zero five, sorry. Yep, zero point zero zero five moles. So zero point zero zero five moles of methanol, and it burns. It produces eight forty joules. So what is delta H? Delta H is going to be eight forty joules divided by zero point zero zero five. That will so be zero point zero. No, it won't be zero point zero five because. uh what i did is i divided 16 and 32 so that is 0.1 0.01 sorry yep 0.01 two divided by 2 is 0.005 oh okay okay but i'm doing it mentally up calculator se check kar lo that might be correct okay so we get some value calculator nahi hai kar lo help me out a little bit uh it's 168000 yeah 168 168 Okay, so one sixty-eight kilojoules per mole is the heat, the enthalpy change of combustion of methanol. So this is the standard value for one mole. Now here's the thing: if you actually do this experiment, will you get one sixty-eight as your answer? मतलब आपने सब कुछ ठीक किया, hundred percent ठीक किया. Will you actually get one sixty-eight as the answer? No, sir. Why not? Lost the surroundings. Exactly. There is going to be some energy that is lost to the surroundings. so which of the three values will change because of that out of these three which of the three values will change uh 840 and then the enthalpy no, no, no. change in this calculation which of the three values will you have different from what they're supposed to be will four. 50 change no yeah you're right it will be 4 because you will have a value that is bigger than 4 right Will your value be bigger than four? So it won't be less. It will be less. Yes. And why is that? So because we lose heat to like the air and stuff. Exactly. So it will not be heated from nineteen to twenty-three. It will probably be heated if the initial value is still nineteen. It will heat to something that is below twenty-three. All right. So I'm going to give you a question that is similar to this one. Try to solve this. Yeah. So heat absorbed by water would be. m which is uh, mass of water 100 not mass of hexane burned times 4.2 times the change in temperature which is 47 minus 22 so that is 25 2500 times 4.2 that should be 10450 joules okay so that's the heat energy released by 0.18 grams of hexane hexane is c6h14 so it's mr Is going to be six times twelve plus fourteen times one, which will be ninety-six. And uh, then I have to figure out the heat energy released. So it's going to be zero point one eight over eighty-six. That will give me the moles. I can't do it. Calculator, do not do. I need calculate the value, please. You have it, right? 
Figure out the delta H is going to be 10,500 divided by this answer. You can, you don't have to copy the value. You can just use the answer button on the calculator to do that. So 10,500 divided by answer gives me 502 kilojoules per mole. Sorry, 5,020 kilojoules per mole. And yeah, that's right. Okay, let's do another question. This one is about solutions. Yeah, so let's write the equation first. HCl reacts with NaOH, makes water. Water is important in this question because we are going to use heat capacity of water to produce whatever the energy released is and all that. Okay, so delta T is uh, initial temperature is 20 and uh, final is 33. So delta T is 13 Kelvin. Okay, or degrees Celsius, it's the same thing. Uh, heat energy is going to be M. Now, what is M? M here is the total mass of both the solutions after they mix, because that's when they react. And uh, when they actually mix, you get 25 of HCl and you have 25 of NaOH. So the total volume of solution is 50 cm cube. And uh, because we're assuming that this has the same density as water, so it is 50 gram. 50 grams equals 50 cm cube. So mass is 50. Uh, heat capacity, specific heat capacity, I'm taking 4.2 again because water is yeah, or uh, multiplying by 13 to figure out the total heat energy that is released. So if I do that, I get 2730. I could make this value better by using 4.18 instead of force uh, 4.2. And then we have to figure out the amount of water that is produced because um, moles of water so say divide getting it to figure out the enthalpy change. Now to do that, I need to know what my limiting reactant is. Uh, in this case, I don't have a limiting reactant because they're reacting in one to one ratio and they have the same values, 25 of this concentration of two, both of them. So I can figure out the number of moles of HCl and that is going to be two into 25 over thousand. And that's going to be 0 0.05 moles. So 0 0.05 moles of HCl reacts with 0 0.05 moles of NaOH. Obviously it produces 0 0.05 moles of water. And now to find the delta H, I divide the heat energy that is released by this number of moles. And that gives me the heat energy per unit mole. And that is 54.6. That's the value I'm getting. I think Samin, you also got the same value, right? Yeah. So 54.6 kilojoules yes. per mole. There you go. Sir, if we did have a limiting reactant, then how mm -hmm. would we do it? So let's suppose, let me change the values a little bit. Let's say, instead of having this, we had uh, zero point, this was not 20, but instead this was, sorry, 25 means are 20. So there will be two changes in the reaction. Number one, this mass will change to the new mass, which is 45. And number two, the number of moles of HCl is irrelevant. It is the number of moles of the limiting reactant that matters. And in this case, the limiting reactant is NaOH. So before I figure out the number of moles of water produced, mujhe number of moles of HCl and number of moles of NaOH calculate dono karne padenge. So if I do that, I will get two times 20 over thousand, which is 0 0.04 mole, which means that I am going to use 0 0.04 mole of NaOH. And that will produce 0 0.04 moles of water. 0 0.05 nahi hoga because some HCl will be left over. And now my values will change based on this. 
तो एक तो मेरी ये वैल्यू बदलेगी टू सेवन थ्री की जीरो की वजह से वो कुछ और हो जाएगी और एक जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फोर वाली वैल्यू आ जाएगी सो द फर्स्ट वैल्यू विल बी थर्टीन टाइम फोर्टी फाइव टाइम्स फोर पॉइंट टू विच इज टू फोर फाइव सेवन एंड द सेकेंड वैल्यू विल बी जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फोर सो टू फोर फाइव सेवन डिवाइड बाई जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फोर गिवस मी स्लाइटली डिफरेंट वैल्यू सिक्सटी वन पॉइंट फोर किलो जूल्स पर मोन ओके so basically when we're calculating the moles we just have to do that of the limiting reactant only yes wo to moles ka simple straight forward reaction hai now here's my question this should still be the same mera answer 54.6 hi aana chahiye tha aisa yahan par kyun nahi hua in this question the dekho enthalpy change of this reaction should be Independent of how much HCl you use, how much NaOH you use, उसकी value अगर fifty four point six उसकी actual value है तो वो ही रहनी चाहिए थी. Why is this not the case in the updated values that I had? Read the statement and tell me where the issue is. Read this part. The highest temperature reached by the solution was thirty three degrees Celsius. That is when they used twenty five cm cube of NaOH. I updated the value to twenty cm cube. Will I get the same result? Heat energy उतनी release थोड़ी होगी. Now the highest temperature reached will be different. Okay, which is why these values are not representing the truth. But if you actually do it, any reaction, our value comes ज़्यादा कर दोगे. But your enthalpy change will be independent of that. If the rea if some reaction has an enthalpy change of fifty four point six. आप ज्यादा वैल्यू यूज करो या कम वॉल्यूम यूज करो यू विल गेट 54.6 फोर एज योर आंसर ऑफ कोर्स यूजिंग ग्रेटर वॉल्यूम हैज एन एडवांटेज व्हाट इज दैट एडवांटेज कम ऑन फिजिक्स का बेसिक सा सवाल है द रीजन यूजिंग ग्रेटर वॉल्यूम इज बेटर इज बिकॉज द परसेंटेज एर रिड्यूस इफ यू यूज अ बिगर वैल्यू इफ यू यूज अ स्मॉलर वॉल्यूम देन द परसेंटेज एर Is greater, so your answer will not be reliable. It's really simple. If you have an error of one degree Celsius and you're using fifty cm cube compared to five hundred cm cube, which pair error is more significant? Fifty in which? Do you get it? Yes, sir. Okay, great. All right. So this is the idea of calorimetry. How do you do this in the lab? Very simple. Here's what you do. 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 Here's we take a thermopole cup the reason we do that is because we want to make sure ke hamare paas jo bhi heat losses hain wo hum kam se kam kare okay so that is why we use a thermopole cup we take a solution usually wo aapko kya karega they'll give you a so solid that you have to mix into the solution or they'll give you two beakers which have reacting solution to aap ek beak ek cup loge usme ek solution daloge फिर आप उसको दूसरे सॉल्यूशन को उस कप में डाल दोगे या आप किसी सॉलिड को उस कप में ऐड कर दोगे देन यू ऑब्वियसली स्टर इट यूजुअली वी डोंट गिव द स्टूडेंट्स अ लिड बट यूजिंग अ लिड इज बेटर व्हिच इज बिकॉज़ देयर इज लेस हीट लॉस माय इंटरनेट कट ऑफ आई एम सॉरी So can you repeat what you said after the percentage error decreases my internet yeah, so cut off I'm basically off. talking about uh how we actually perform calorimetry in the lab so what we do is we take a solution usually or hum usme kisi dusre solution ko or any solid we dissolve it in that and we stir it obviously we try to stir it with the same thing jisse hum usko measure kar rahe hain heat energy ko so what will you use to stir that the thermometer thermometer yeah so we take the thermometer and it is we use that same thermometer usse ko use karke hum usko stir karte hain to ye hamare paas is tarah ka ek cup hota hai aur usme hamare paas thermometer ki reading aa jati hai jo bhi reading aati hai i'm sorry it's too dark apparently theek hai ye cup hai theek hai this is your beaker and this is the thermopole cup so we use thermopole cup because uh, it creates a air jacket Slowly stirring, we get this. 
and uh, we try to keep a lid on so that there is even less loss of heat. And from the thermometer, we figure out the change in uh, temperature. Then obviously we know the volume of solutions used or we know the mass of whatever we added to water. Or usse hame pata lag jata hai. Now here's the interesting part and uh, kind of a ratta thing as well. Jab aap heat energy nikaal rahe ho na, kabhi bhi calorie metry lab mein aap kar rahe ho aur aapne heat energy nikaal rahe ho. We use mass as volume of solution. But jab aap moles nikaal rahe ho, then you use mass. तो दो जगह पे मैस है ना तो आपके पास जो यहां पर मैस है ना दिस इज मैस ऑफ द रिएक्टेंट तो अगर आपसे वो कहता है यूजली एक रिएक्शन आ जाता होता है मैग्नीशियम रिबन का एसिड के साथ रिएक्शन सो व्हेन यू डू दैट फॉर फाइंडिंग आउट द चेंज इन हीट एनर्जी और द हीट एनर्जी रिलीज्ड वी डोंट यूज मैस ऑफ मैग्नीशियम वी यूज मैस ऑफ सॉल्यूशन क्योंकि मैग्नीशियम बहुत थोड़ी सी अमाउंट में होता है वो उसमें डिसॉल्व हो जाता है इट इज द वॉल्यूम ऑफ सॉल्यूशन दैट मैटर्स व्हेन वी वांट टू फिगर आउट हाउ मच हीट एनर्जी इज अब्सॉर्ब्ड But when we talk about the moles, जिससे हमने उसको divide करना है जो heat energy आती है, तो वो हम magnesium के लिए देते हैं. Uh, usually magnesium हमारा limiting reaction होता है तो इसलिए. Sir, I don't so, understand. So let's suppose I want to figure out the enthalpy change of magnesium reacting with sulfuric acid. So I take sulfuric acid in a beaker. I add that. I put that in a polystyrene cup so that there is less loss of heat energy. And then i add magnesium ribbon into that magnesium ribbon ka mass maine pehle pata kar lena ab uske baad maine magnesium ribbon usme add kar diya and now i stir it they are going to react hydrogen gas is going to be given out so obviously in this case i won't have a lid and i'm going to stir it with the thermometer thermometer is going to show some change in heat energy i take the change in temperature i know c of water okay and i know the mass of solution that i have so when i want to figure out the heat energy that is absorbed by water to mujhe water ka mass lunga main heat energy released by magnesium nahi dekh sakta yahan pe i am assuming one thing i am going to assume that heat released by magnesium is equal to heat absorbed by solution and that is why i use mc delta t and the mass here is of solution not of magnesium because my heat released by magnesium ko independently calculate ya measure kar hi nahi sakta and then jab main enthalpy change calculate karunga so i will need to take this heat energy and i'll divide this by number of moles and this number of mole is going to be moles of whatever reactant i have magnesium in this case sir i think i can okay another reaction that we sometimes use is that bahut rarely aata hai wo wo is tarah se hota hai ki aapko ek beaker of water de deta hai wo ya round bottom flask of water de deta hai aur aapko ek fuel कोई भी एक रैंडम फ्यूल होता है जिसको वो बर्न करता है अब ये फ्यूल को हमने बर्न किया और इससे हमें ये राउंड बॉटम फ्लास्क को हमने हीट कर दिया और इसकी हीट जितना भी टेम्परेचर चेंज है ना वो हमें पता लग जाता है एंड वी वांट टू फिगर आउट द इंथेल्पी चेंज ऑफ कंबशन ऑफ दिस फ्यूल हाउ डू वी डू दिस वी फिगर आउट द हीट एनर्जी सो हीट प्रोड्यूस्ड बाय द फ्यूल we figure it out by taking the heat energy absorbed by water ya jo bhi solution hum heat kar rahe hain yahan par and then we measure the change in mass of this thing so change in mass of fuel hum yahan se measure karte hain and use that to figure out the number of moles to hamare paas heat energy release bhi mil jati hai क्योंकि इट्स द सेम एज हीट एनर्जी अब्जॉर्ब बाय वाटर अज्यूमिंग देयर इज नो हीट लॉस एंड देन द चेंज इन मास ऑफ द फ्यूल टेल्स मी हाउ मच फ्यूल वाज एक्चुअली बर्न एंड यूजिंग दैट आई कैन फिगर आउट हाउ मच हाउ मेनी मोल्स ऑफ फ्यूल विल एक्चुअली यूज्ड और मैं उन दोनों को डिवाइड करके अपनी हीट इन एंथैल्पी निकाल लेता हूं नाउ ऑब्वियसली दे आस्क यू फॉर एरर्स सो एरर्स क्या हैं बहुत से सिंपल सिंपल एरर्स हो सकते हैं 
for example one error is that uh, there will be loss of heat energy to the surroundings pakki si baat hai secondly what is the error in temperature reading wo bhi hame pata hai 0.05 hota hai agar aapka 0.1 tak kam hai shikar hai ya jo ki usually hame lab mein given hote hain agar hame 1 degree celsius wala mein shikar hai jo ki lab mein nahi given hote hamare paas 0.1 wale hote hain to uska error hame wahan se pata chal jata hai then they ask you for percentage error in the final value so obviously percentage error kya hoga agar aapka temperature change mein value let's suppose uh hamare paas change in temperature is from 20 degree celsius 20.2 degree celsius it went to 39.5 degree celsius now what's the change in error uh, the change is going to be 39.5 minus 20.2 which is going to be 7 that is 19.3 degree celsius but then uh the error is 0.1 ka half multiply by 2 because aap do values ko kar rahe ho so error is also going to be 0.1 so 0.1 divided by 19.3 that is going to be 5.18 into 100% if i want to figure out the percentage error so my percentage error is 0.52% so mujhe yahan se error pata chal gaya So they sometimes ask you to measure the percentage error. Sir, Temperature ka usually nahi bolta. Where did I get zero point one from? Where did I get zero point one from? So the uh-huh. error in this value. So the error in this value is zero point zero. Sorry, zero point one, and the error in z- this value is zero point one divided by two, which is zero point zero five, and the error in this value is also zero point zero five plus minus. Itna hoga na. and because i'm subtracting the two values the error will add up so 0.05 plus 0.05 is 0.1 whenever you subtract two or add two values the error adds up theek hai sir theek hai so that's how usually wo aapko thermometer ki values mein error nahi puchta wo aapko mass ki values mein error puchta hai wo aapse solution ki volume mein error puch leta hai burette ki readings mein error puch leta hai but the method still remains the same no matter what value you are choosing you are going to subtract the final and the initial and you are going to add their errors and you are going to take the percentage error based on that just make sure that whenever you are calculating the percentage error you do it on the initial value jaise yahan pe initial value was 19.3 to maine percentage error us pe calculate kiya ya jo bhi calculated value hogi usme percentage error hoga aapka theek hai to ye bas aapne zehen mein rakhna hai ki jo bhi aapka रिजल्टेंट वैल्यू है जो उनका सप्रैक करके आंसर आया है उसमें परसेंटेज एरर आपने कैलकुलेट करना होता है और राइट सो दैट्स द आइडिया ऑफ कैलोरी मेट्री इन द लैब और वो आपसे उसके ऊपर पूछ लेता है देर आर टू एग्जांपल्स गिवन इन योर बुक जो आपकी नई वाली बुक है मैंने आपको भेज दी हुई है गो टू चैप्टर सिक्स देर इज प्रैक्टिकल एक्टिविटी एट द एंड ऑफ द चैप्टर सो वो दो सॉल्व एग्जाम्पल्स हैं कि कैसे उसने करना है लैब में एंड ऑल दैट and when schools open i would suggest that you do an experiment of this sort i'm sure aapke teacher aapko karwa bhi denge hopefully all right so yeah that's it that is calorie metry